So here's a thing, when you make a almost excessive amount of videos like I do, you quickly run out of storage space for the movie files, the files you keep on your camera, pictures, and you need somewhere else to put them. Now I've been using a little external drive I had, this uh, Toshiba model, but it's only 170 gigabytes and that quickly got eaten up by 50 frame per second high definition video. So I went onto Amazon and found this TechNet USB 3 docking station for about 17 quid and it's got quite good reviews. And as I have a number of redundant three and a half inch and um, two and a half inch discs lying around, I thought I would give this a go rather than getting an external hard drive. So this is in Amazon frustration free packaging. Although already I'm starting to feel slightly frustrated that I haven't got a pair of scissors handy. But that's probably my own fault. Anyway, let's see if we can get into this without scissors. It should be easy with frustration free packaging. And we are in. Now I wouldn't normally do a video like this, but you know, it makes sense to review stuff that I use in the course of my nostalgic journey. And this is definitely something applicable to that. So, inside the box we have the unit itself. You also get a power adapter so you can plug it into the mains. So that means that it only requires one USB port on your machine rather than one for power and one for data. And it's USB 3 when, and backwards compatible which you definitely need because USB 2 just doesn't really cut the speed for having a hard disk externally. So here's the unit, let's move this out of the way. Here's the unit itself, TechNet, and you can see you can put a two and a half inch disk in there. And if you've got a three and a half inch disk, it will just push this bay down and also go straight in. If you want to have a look inside, you can see the connector down there, nothing much else to it. On the back, USB 3 plug, DC in, and a little power button. There's also a double version of this, which can take two drives at a time, and it's got a facility to um, clone a drive from one drive to another, which is a handy feature, but it was about 40 pounds, I don't really need that. So, let's see what this little beauty can do. So I've got the unit set up behind my laptop there, and just for a bit of nostalgic, purposes I'm going to try this old SATA one three and a half inch drive first so it should just slot oh, I think that's probably in just slot straight in there and then if we hit the power button on the back this probably isn't the best place to put it we have some power now this isn't going to be a good measure of the drive speed because you know this can take SATA three this is a SATA one but, you know, this thing is useful for swapping drivers around. That's one of the beautiful things about it. You can swap out a two and a half inch drive, you can put three and a half inch, and you can move data from place to place. And you don't have to have the same driving all the time. So old files you can keep on a disk somewhere else and leave it on a shelf and then swap it in when you need that data. And it's a good way of making use of old hard drives. So, uh, let's have a look at this one. Normally Windows will auto mount a drive, but my setup requires drives to be mounted manually through the disk manager. So a few clicks through that and a letter assigned later and you have your drive. Now I thought I'd run a speed test on this SATA One drive using Crystal Disk Mark just for shits and giggles and it performed about where you'd expect. Probably a bit better if I'm honest. Uh, the test is split into sequential read-write with 128 kilobit blocks with multiple queues, random read-write with 4 kilobit blocks, sequential with 1 megabit blocks, and random 4 kilobit with a single queue blocks. SATA 1 can handle up to 150 megabytes per second, but drives rarely ever come close to their maximum throughput unless you have a pumped up SSD. The TechNet Bay can take SATA 3 drives which offer a throughput of up to 600 megabytes per second and handily USB 3 can support up to about 640 megabytes per second, so they pretty much go hand in hand. Okay, and now I've plugged in a Seagate desktop SSHD. This is a hybrid drive, so it's got eight gigabytes of solid state memory, which it caches data from the 
5,400 RPM hard drive. And inside the computer itself, I've actually got a two and a half inch model of the same drive. So we can test speed for speed of the USB cradle and the internal SATA drive. Let's give it a go. So on the left is the TechNet Bay drive and on the right is the internal SSHD. You'll notice that the TechNet drive is performing pretty well for a 5400 RPM drive. All the speeds are above average. Now the internal drive is actually mounted in a cradle on a DVD drive SATA connection. So it's actually running at SATA 2. And even though SATA 2 can handle a throughput of 300 megabytes per second, you can see how much it's constraining the drive. If you were to hook this Technic Bay up to a USB 2, you could probably expect a similar story. If you look at my test for my SSD running on a SATA 3, internally you can see how fast you can really get with a proper SSD. I'm not sure how fast an SSD would run in this Technet Bay, but given the results here, I imagine it would be fairly quick. So, speed wise, the bay works for me. And being out in the open, there's also not much chance of it overheating. Plus you get the convenience of swapping drives on a whim. One thing I did notice was that sometimes during a large data transfer, the drive would lose its connection. I think this was due to my USB powering down halfway through. So I changed a few power settings in the control panel and it seems okay for now. Noise wise, it really depends on your drive. With my Seagate SSHD, you can barely hear it. However, with that old SATA 1 drive, it's a different story. So, there we go. For 17 quid, this bay works great for me, and I give it a thumbs up. Now, if there was only some way of getting extra memory on the cheap too. Hmm. 